Hey, what's going on guys? Sorry I missed last week's video. I was feeling pretty crappy last week and my voice sounded really bad. So it wouldn't have made for a really good video. Um, feeling a lot better this week, so we're back at it um, with another screencast type of video. This week I wanted to talk um, about programming interviews. I've received a lot of questions via email and some comments just regarding this topic. I haven't touched upon it all too much, but you know, it's a pretty big topic. A lot of details, nuances go in to how this works. And this video will be dedicated on the process and the flow and what you kind of expect when going through this. And specifically programming interviews. And if you're watching and you're interested in software, you want to pursue software as a career, you will have to go through some type of programming interviews. All right. And yeah, this is going to be dedicated to process and let's just start. Um, first thing, um, I got a lot of really good points here from this really good book I have and there's a lot of books on programming interviews. One that I thought is really good was uh, Programming Interviews Exposed. Um, let's just look that up. Uh, let me just get you guys the link. Yeah, this book. So this book is actually quite helpful. Um, it goes through not only the process, which we're gonna, I'm just pretty much gonna regurgitate in this video, but it goes through also a lot of different topics, questions, it also goes through everything till negotiation and a lot of stuff. So this is a really good book. Um, pretty much a lot of the things we're gonna go through in this screencast is just me repeating and maybe adding to small points to major ideas in this book. So watch this for sure, but in the end, and you're still interested, check out this book, all right? All right, let's just start making an outline for this whole process. Um, first thing that <clears throat> you want to do is find a company. Why is everything bold? Find a company um, or position that interests you the most. And this is just the first start of the process. And this is just the part where you have to do some introspection and what do you want. So instead of just going out there and trying to execute your search on everything under the sun it's a much better filter if the very first step you take is just do a little bit of introspection and ask yourself what do you actually want and the best way to do this is to ask your friends what kind of job do you think you want very much of the times what kind of job you think you want and you hear about that job it's not actually it doesn't sound that cool afterwards so the best char best point of this is just ask your friends first if they're working in any type of software or programming position what their job is like and see what you think and also do a little research on what different types of jobs are like at different types of companies so also companies vary in size positions are also very different and different jobs different companies you guys get the idea tons of combinations of this so know what you want and try to filter that down first. Um, let's just go through big companies. You know where to find them. It'll be something like Apple. If you want to work at a big company, a lot of people talk about big four. I only want to work at Microsoft or Google. Obviously their jobs, they're no secret. You can find them anywhere, job descriptions and probably more in depth information for all those big companies. It's very easy to find. Um, for startup companies, it's also a little harder. You have to do a little digging yourself. Um, so for smaller companies, you definitely have to dig and it's a little trickier. Um, let me just get some tips on digging. If you're interested in a startup company, I'm going to leave big companies at that. That's pretty much it. So for startup companies, um, one way is to go to a bunch of VC websites. VC is venture capital websites and each venture capital company will have um, portfolios of all the companies they invest in with some bios. So actually this could be an interesting way for you guys to find small companies. Some VCs are very general, some are very specific, like they only invest in like green or environmental companies and maybe that's where you want to work. So find a VC like that, see where they've invested in their portfolio and you can find some companies that way. Um, 
You can also read the startup press, which is, it's like a constant slew of startup news going in and out all day, every day. So reading the press can give some insight on different companies and different industries. Um, and then overall, um, it's pretty much Google for press, fundraising stats, uh, and industry. So we just covered press. Fundraising stats are actually a cool point behind any startup because this gives you insight onto how big or how far along that small company is actually doing. Obviously, a company like Uber that has fundraised a lot and is quite big is very different than a small company that has fundraised very little. And this is all public information. So it's really easy for you to find this if you just try. And obviously, industry, if you know what you want or you feel you know some gravity or affinity towards a particular industry, you can just search by that. All right. So this is about finding something that you think, what do you want? And just do your own research first before you start executing the search itself, because it's doing step one as well or best you can is going to make step two much easier. Okay. So once you start, once you've like asked yourself, what do you really want and filtered it down a little bit, you're going to be prepared to kind of start executing the search. And what I'm going to do here is try to give a list of how to execute the search from the best option first to the worst option last. So this ordering is important and um, it's just my opinion of what's potentially the best way to go about execution of the search. So first is the furrow with your close friend. And why is this good? Because this is like the closest, most personal and easiest way to find a position in any company, not only programming, just overall. So find a friend you mutually respect and trust. Um, they will know potentially also, they'll have insights on what you like, what you don't like. And if they're at a position at a company already, they might know that a position or job there might be a good fit for you. And they'll let the company know and they'll let you know. So this is potentially the easiest um, and best way to find any job. Um, this is also cool to potentially even prevent the interview. So a lot of the times when referrals come in, there's already a set amount of trust between the company and the potential candidate. So this sometimes just even kind of bypasses programming interviews because you're coming from a close source, all right? So that's first referral with your close friend. The next is also really similar, but it's gonna be a referral with your not so close friends. And this, the reason why A is so good, but it's also super rare. So many of the times, many referrals can co probably come from indirect friends or people you don't know so well. And even if this is just an acquaintance, maybe a professor or somebody you might have just had one group project with in class, indirect friends also expand the network significantly and are probably the second best way to get introductions to a company. So good points about this is you have to be a bit, you have to be a bit aggressive yourself to reach out to these guys because since you're not really close friends to them, you're pretty much doing, you're not doing anyone any favors. This is for you, right? So you have to be a little bit aggressive on your end to reach out and just be as professional as possible. Like these friends aren't very close, so you should treat all this interaction as professionally as possible when you ask to get introduction to said company. Obviously part A, these are your close buddies. It's a little more casual for here, just keep everything professional and remember you're using your network at this point. Um, another point is companies still enjoy this a lot. Whatever introduction they can get or a recruiting manager can, can get, even if it's from any type of introduction rather than them reaching out or them going through any other system, this is still really good. So this is just going to tie, tie off the loop on referrals. First, try to do personal referral. Second, try to do kind of an indirect referral. Um, let's keep moving on. Um, the third one I'm going to list as potentially the easiest, but this is also a little bit of a double-edged sword. 
and we have to talk a little bit about recruiting services so these are kind of things like headhunters or recruiting companies that are dedicated to trying to find you a job and I'm sure once you guys start looking you'll run into a lot of these companies um, that are just kind of in the realm of recruiting services um, why I'm putting it here is that it's very easy you kind of don't do very much work because they find a lot of jobs for you so you just kind of sit back you let them know what you want and let them know kind of what you're trying to filter by and they will go out and try to find positions for you but why I'm also bad because they don't really know what you want so the bad part that I just want to mention of using recruiting services is that in the end it's not as personal as someone you might know or even they don't know what you want right so they're just trying to do their best to make a commission make some money off you get you a job it's going to be very easy on your part but in the end recruiting services may or may not work for you um, it hasn't worked for me in the past but I just want to put it here a third because it's extremely easy to do and um, yeah definitely check it out if you want all right so let's just move on from there okay so the next two ways to execute the search are going to be a little less a little crappy to, to be honest so but we have to list them out there because they could still potentially be ways to execute the search um, D I'm going to put the job fair and I really don't like these job fairs and I started when I first went to my first job fair it sucked it was terrible and they slowly got better as I got better at them but I still want to put it here because it can lead to some opportunities but you just have to look at jobs fair with the right perspective to get the most out of it I think <clears throat> the perspective that made me actually use jobs fairs a little better is to kind of use them as practice and it's it's practice to communicate and present yourself the best in like one minute so at these job fairs it's quite competitive there's a lot of people talking to companies trying to look for jobs um, you shouldn't consider job fairs as the good way to find a job but what you should do is just use it as like a like a battlegrounds like a practice grounds for you to just talk to people and present yourself as best you can so I use it kind of like as practice but in the end it can still lead to some opportunity so I'm putting it here um, and this is probably the worst case I'm sure all of you guys know but this is all the work yourself cold emails plus internet so in the end um, after ABCD um, if you still can't find any leads what you have to resort to is doing all the legwork yourself via email or just applying on job portals on the internet so big companies obviously will have job portals where you have to make portfolios fill out all your details um, write a cover letter all that stuff goes into applying to jobs online it's sucky grunt work and you just have to do it sometimes um, you know I was all day doing this for like a whole semester in college at one point and <clears throat> LinkedIn is also a good research to get contacts and emails of potential HR where were people making recruiting decisions and if you find their emails which should always be on LinkedIn especially for recruiters that is another way you can go about doing it so um, this work sucks I just want to reiterate that but um, it's kind of like this sucks but you got to do it so I'm putting it last here but I'm not saying don't try to do E at all I think still maybe in the end going through this kind of work is still kind of going to build your character quote unquote and eventually lead to some interviews so don't forget e, even though it's the worst all right guys so i'm going to wrap up the video here and share this document um let's just go over quickly what it meant first there was kind of a little bit of the introspection of finding what you want and then i kind of went into the execution phase of it in order so the ordering is important but this is how to execute the job search and hopefully after all this execution you'll land um, some kind of interview and um, I'm gonna make another video dedicated to this probably a part two but in part two we'll talk about the actual interview steps themselves after execution so we just went up to execution 
once this is done, you'll get something and the interview start. So that's going to be part two. All right, guys. So I'll see you in that video.